I would like to thank uh, UNDP and ATD Fourth World for convening this very important discussion. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity we have with this crisis to shift the global economy in the right direction. 11 trillion US dollars have already been injected by governments all over the world in order to ensure a swift recovery from the crisis. And how this money invested shall matter a lot for the next 10, 15 years, uh, both with respect to climate change mitigation and with respect to the fight against poverty. A study published in May of this year, uh, reviewing some 300 recovery plans and co-authored by Joseph Stiglitz and Nicholas Stern in particular, concluded that in 4% only of these plans, there was an ambition to support climate mitigation. 4% other plans were actually brown plans that were going to increase greenhouse gas emissions. 92% of the plans were neutral from the point of view of their contribution to climate change mitigation. And we need certainly to um, ensure that the investments that are made contribute much uh, more in much larger proportions to climate change mitigation. On the other hand, we must ensure that the recovery plans are absolutely poor, poor, that they are not uh, based on austerity programs uh, to compensate for the mounting public debt, that they are not financed um, by increasing VAT re rates that affect uh, poor households in particular, uh, but instead supported by progressive taxation schemes. So the poor, poor, pro-climate equation is one we can succeed. And we can think about a just transition that goes beyond simply compensating the losers from the shift away from, from fossil energy. This pro-climate, pro-poor approach should rely, in my view, on four pillars. First, investing in climate mitigation strategies that can create employment opportunities for people with lower levels of qualification. For example, in the retrofitting of buildings, in the recycling, the circular economy, in renewable energies, wind, solar, are much more labor intensive than fossil energies or in agroecology. Second, we need to invest in public goods that can make goods and services necessary for the exercise of human rights more affordable for households in poverty. For example, by strengthening public transportation in order to allow people to enjoy mobility without having to depend on an individual car or by encouraging decentralized energy grids in rural areas. Thirdly, we need to ensure the participation of people in poverty in designing recovery plans and the green deals that shall be associated with these recovery plans. Fourthly, we need to ensure that these recovery plans are financed by progressive taxation schemes, by taxing the wealthiest parts of the population and the large corporations. And I believe that if we keep in mind these four components of the next uh, transformation of the economy, we can succeed in managing this pro-poor, pro-climate equation for the next generation. Thank you, and I look forward to continuing our collaboration.